Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be building this beautiful brick fire pit in our backyard. This is a little bit more complicated than the typical DIY project. However, this will last for years and it is really good quality. So stick around and I'll show you how to do this. Now, before you jump into a project like this, you really need to look around the surroundings, see what type of area you have to work with. For me, there were four trees that were really close to where the fire pit was gonna go, and we're planning on building a patio around the fire pit as well, and we don't want those roots busting up the patio or limbs falling down and breaking the fire pit. So I cleared those out, and now I'm ready to start the construction of the fire pit. Now, I found the center of where I want the fire pit and patio to go, and both the patio and fire pit are gonna be round. So what I'm gonna do is put in a stake in the middle, and I'll take a can of spray paint and string, and what you do is just wrap the string around the spray paint, and you can use this as a compass to draw a perfectly symmetrical circles. So I've got the outside of the perimeter where the patio is gonna go, and here is the inside of where the fire pit's gonna go. Now I'm gonna be pouring a cement slab that the fire pit will be built on top of. And this is gonna be the same size as the fire pit, just a circular cement slab. And this may seem like overkill for some people. If you don't wanna do this step, that's fine. Just put gravel down and build the brick wall off of the gravel. I really like the cement slab because it keeps everything really strong, solid together. If the ground shifts at all or moves up and down for frost, it's not gonna break the fire pit or the brick wall apart. It's just gonna float on top of the slab. So even if it seems like overkill, I like doing things a little bit overkill because I know it's gonna be safe and I'm not gonna have to redo it later. So I'm gonna get this area cleaned out. I'm gonna be using a PVC form. This is just thin plastic PVC. It's about a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. You can find just about anything that's bendable. You can use thin quarter inch Luan plywood and bend that in place. They do make flexible forms at like Home, Home Depot and Lowe's that you can buy. But basically anything that you can cut to the height that you want and is flexible enough to bend around in the circle, you can use. So you can be creative with this part. Now I'm gonna fill the base of this up with gravel. This will help level out the area that I have inside this form, as well as give the slab stability once it dries. So the form is about four inches thick and nearly a little over four feet wide. It'll use close to six and a half 80 pound bags of concrete. So I'm gonna mix this up fairly soupy so that I can get all of them into the slab before any of them dry and harden in place. I wanna make sure all of it is still movable when I'm ready to screed the cement and level it out across the slab. Now once the form is full, you take a two x four and slide it over top of the form and that will level out the cement and scrape any excess cement that you don't need off the sides of the form. And that's perfectly fine. Next, I'm gonna take a magnesium trowel and smooth out the top of this area. Screeding it with the two x four, it gets it pretty level, but it doesn't give a nice smooth finish. I'm not gonna worry too much about the finish itself because this is gonna be covered up by bricks as well as a fire pit with ashes and charcoal inside. So I'm gonna get it as smooth as I can with this trowel, but not worry about getting a perfectly smooth, shiny finish on top of this cement. I'll let the slab dry for a day and a half to two days and then I can take the forms off and continue building. Now it's ready to start building the fire pit. And to do this, I'm gonna grab some of these fire bricks and this will create the outer 
circle of what you actually see on the outside and it'll make the fire pit look really nice. On the inside, I'm going to be using this metal circle or fire pit circle that I bought at Tractor Supply. You can find this at a lot of different places. Now to create some airflow at the bottom as well as a drain, I'm going to cut three circles out of this fire pit ring. To do this, I'll take my grinder and I'll cut three lines in a star shape pattern. Once I cut that, I can take some pliers and fold those triangle shapes upward and that will create a somewhat of a circle. Now once I have those three holes cut out, I'll put a short PVC pipe in each one of these holes. I will be building a brick wall on top of this PVC pipe and then filling the inside in between the metal ring and the outer wall of brick with concrete. So this PVC pipe will create a form that won't collapse and will hold the weight of the concrete that I'm pouring into the hole. Now a couple of you might mention that you shouldn't use PVC pipe, it's gonna melt with the heat of the fire. You can actually take these out, use a hammer and tap on it, and it'll slide right out after the cement has dried. The next step will be building the brick wall around the outside. And to do this, you're gonna to need to get some mortar and mix this up, and you wanna make sure that this stays pretty dry. You don't want it wet and runny, or else it's not gonna support the weight of the brick that you're putting on top of it. So what you're looking for is a pretty thick consistency like this, you bounce it on the trowel, it's not falling off, it's not it running around. You drop it, it stays in a clump, and that's what you're looking for. Now you can see, if you watch every brick that I pick up, there is a little bit of dirt and some stuff stuck to the brick, so I actually scrape each brick off before I put it down, and that will just make sure that it bonds well with the cement. If there's dirt on the side of the brick, it's not gonna bond like it should. It is also helpful to put a thick layer of mortar down on the surface where you're gonna be laying the bricks. And you can work ahead not too far or else the mortar might actually start setting up before you get there. I typically put enough for about four or five bricks ahead of where I'm working. Now as you put the brick down, you'll see the mortar is squishing out on both sides at the bottom, and that's good. That's squeezing the mortar into every space underneath the brick, and you can just scrape off that mortar that's squeezing out and throw it back in the wheelbarrow and use it for the next brick. Now when I come to the vent holes, I'm gonna be cutting the bricks so that it will stay consistent, the same brick width in between the joints. That way when I go through and add the second layer, all the joints will match up. Now I'm getting started with the second layer, and you'll want to make sure that the mortar down on the first layer is dry enough that when you push on the bricks on top, it's not going to shift things around and mess up what you've already done. So I let it sit for probably 15-20 minutes, but it does take a while to get around the circle. So if it's on a warm day, most likely the mortar will set up strong enough to continue the second layer without waiting. Now every once in a while as you're working, you wanna take this brick joiner tool and smooth out the mortar in between the bricks before it dries completely. Now that gives a really nice finish and cleans it up a lot and shows the lines in between the bricks really well. It also helps squeeze the mortar back in and make sure that it's filling the space and bonding with all the bricks. Two rows finished and it's a great time for the job inspectors to come check it out and make sure everything's looking right. Thankfully they both liked it so I'm good to go. Now it's time to start the third layer and this is basically just rinse and repeating the same steps onto the third and fourth layer. 
Now, one thing that is different with the second and third and fourth layer is it gets more important to make sure everything is level. On the first layer and the second layer, you won't notice as much, but by the time you get to the third layer, if you're not making sure you're staying level, you can get really far off, and by that point, it's hard to correct. So you'll wanna make sure every once in a while you're checking, making sure it's level, and you can correct it on the next layer if anything is wrong. Now you can see the PVC pipes that I installed for vents. I actually covered those in mortar so that, that can start drying and hardening before I pour the cement in. This will do a couple things. This will hold the metal ring down and keep it from moving around once I pour the cement inside, but it also will seal it so that the cement doesn't go around the pipe and leak into the middle of the fire ring. Now I've got the fourth layer done, I'm going to go around and make sure that I've smoothed out all the mortar joints with the brick joiner. Once that is done, it's time to fill up the middle with concrete and let it dry. Now, if you guys are regular viewers of the channel and would love to help out, but also get some really cool merch with my logo on it for Simon Says DIY, go check out patreon.com. I'll leave the link down in the description, but this is a place where you guys can help support the channel, but I'll also be giving away this free merch to my supporters on Patreon. So if you're interested in that, go check it out and I'll get back to work now. Now at this point, you definitely could just leave it this way and it will work just fine and look pretty good. But I'm actually gonna be putting a line of bricks on top to top this off and to cover up the concrete in the middle and make it look a little bit nicer. So what I'm gonna try to do is level out the cement between the metal and the outside brick layer. That way I'll have a level surface to lay the bricks on top. Now I'm just gonna use a hose real quick and clean up some of the cement that has leaked over top of the metal ring in the middle. Now it'll just look a little bit better later if that's all cleaned up. Now I'll let that concrete sit for about a day and then I can come back and it's set up enough to start putting on the last row of bricks. Now I found that this last row is by far the most time consuming piece of the process. It probably took about as long as it did to lay all four rows of bricks just doing this top row. So as you can see, I started out by laying all the bricks out in place where they're gonna go, just to make sure I have all of the ones that I need right here ready to go. Now, then I removed about four or five bricks so that I can put in a thick layer of mortar underneath. And as I was going around, I just kept continuing that. Like I mentioned before, this took just about as long as it did to lay all four rows below this one. And it also took about the same amount of mortar as it did for all four rows below. The two rows down below took two 80 pound bags of mortar and the top row just like that took almost two 80 pound bags of mortar as well. So you can see the gaps in between these bricks are a lot larger than the ones below and they are sort of a pizza shape. So on the inside, because it's going around a circle, there'll be about a half an inch gap and on the outside, there'll be two to three inch gap for this circle. Now another thing that made this a little bit harder is it's such a big chunk of mortar that it's it doesn't want to stay in place. So I actually found it easier to just get it close to where it needs to be. Then I'll let it set up a little bit and come back once the cement is a little bit harder and then I can smooth it out a little bit better. So once I get it pretty close, I'll let it go, keep working around the circle and come back later and smooth it out better. Now you can see the mortar has started to set up, so I'm gonna come back and fill up the joints, make sure they're full, and then I'll come back with the brick joiner and smooth those out even more.
Now one thing that did help, the second bag of cement, I mixed this up a lot drier than the first and the cement is staying a little bit better than before. I still need to leave it for a little bit and come back later and finish smoothing it out but it is staying a lot better. So you wanna make sure you mix that cement really dry. It still needs to be wet enough to stick to the bricks and be able to be molded into the shape that you need, but it needs to be stable and not run out once you have the bricks set. Now I'm just working on the last couple bricks. This will finish off the top row. And then I'm gonna let this fire pit sit for about three or four days before starting the fire. You don't want the mortar to still be wet while you're trying to start a fire inside. It can cause things to crack and expand and that's a big mess. So I'm gonna let this dry for three or four days and then come back and test it out. Now I've tested out the drainage of this fire pit and it works really good. I mean, with three holes at the bottom, there's no way this is gonna fill up. So I put a hose in and it wouldn't even fill up at all. So that's really good. It also allows a lot of wind to, or air to supply the fire. There's not a lot of smoke. Once this fire gets going, you'll see that there's hardly any smoke at all, which is great. And it keeps it really hot and feeds the fire with oxygen at the bottom, which causes a really nice big flame to come up out of the fire pit. So you can see there's hardly any smoke at all. I can't really even see any. And it's sending the heat straight up away from everybody. If you're sitting around the fire pit, it's tall enough that the smoke, if there is any, it will go right above you and not get in your eyes. So we're really excited about this. I'm actually planning to be building a large patio as well as some porch swings around this and make this a really nice outdoor area where we can entertain people and have people over and it'll be a really nice place to hang out. So stay tuned for future videos that I'm gonna be uploading on this outdoor entertainment area. So if you guys have not yet hit that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel, Consider doing that and then hit that bell icon down below and then YouTube will actually let you know when I upload new videos and you won't miss out on any content. Thanks so much for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next one.